What is up everyone? In this video, we're going to cover when you should use pointers in Golang. I already made a video about pointers a couple of months ago, but still I get a lot of questions from people and they say, okay, Anthony, I, I understand pointers, but when should I use them? Right, that's what we're gonna cover. But before we continue, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments to boost these videos. You will do me an enormous favor. And of course, I also have the, uh, my Discord community. Jump into there if you wanna be educated with all tech-related shenanigans, right? And of course, for the people that really wanna level up, I also have the full-time godev.com course. It's basically my, um, how do we call it? My flagship on how you can be professionally active in as a Golang engineer in the industry. All right, so let's go, uh, let's let's get this, this thing started, right? So basically, uh, let's start at the beginning because we need to take a little step back. So I'm gonna make uh, a type, I'm gonna make a user, I'm gonna make it very simple. That's gonna be a structure, right? I'm gonna give this an email, which is gonna be a string. I'm also gonna give this a username maybe, uh, which is also gonna be a string and maybe an H or something, uh, which is gonna be an int. Very simple, right? So the main problem comes uh, from people um, that th they don't understand is basically this function, these method receivers on structures, right? So uh, let's, let's make one. So we're gonna make a func here. We're gonna say you from user. And then we're gonna say, for example, uh, return me the email of this user, which is gonna be a string here. And we are just gonna return you email and call it a day, right? So if we wanna make this user here, we can say uh, user is gonna be a user here, right? Just like that. And we're gonna say, um, let's keep it simple. I'm gonna just do the email, which is going to be uh, agg at foo.com. Something very simple, right? Of course, this comma here, and then we can actually print. Um, Print LN user and the function here email, right? And if we do go run main.go, we're gonna see agg at foo.com. Very simple, right? So first of all, this function receiver, this method receiver, whatever you want to call it, is basically a syntactic sugar, right? Because sometimes you see this, right? Which is gonna take in a pointer to a user, and sometimes you don't see it and you're confused. I understand. But this function email is the exact same thing as this function, right? So we're gonna say email, which is gonna take in a user, which is a user, and it's gonna return a string. And the only thing we're gonna do is return user.email, right? These two functions here are completely the same. And if you already understand what pointers do, right? If you make this a pointer, that basically means that we are going to take in the address the memory address of this user, which basically means that we are going to adjust the value of the email into the memory, which basically means that after in our application, we are actually have these points to our user and in some function, we're gonna update that email address. It's going to reflect on all these uh, uh, references we have to that user, right? So that basically comes to the first point because using pointers, it's, 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 it can be very technical, uh, a lot of use cases here and there, and I don't want to overburden you with all these technical uh, shenanigans. So I'm going to give you the, be the, the best tip you can ever have for that, right? And basically, when are we going to use them, right? When? Well, the, f the main reason is basically uh, when we need to adjust the memory. Actually, when we need to update state I, will, I would say state right when we need to update state in this case guys this email is basically a, some kind of a getter right we don't do anything we, the only thing we do is just return the email of the user we don't need a pointer for that right so we can just do this right but let's say we have another function here and we're going to say func user let's make this a user here and we're going to say for example um Set email, I, I don't like setters to be honest, so I'm not gonna, it's gonna be the, the most best example I could give, but uh, I'm gonna call this completely different because I hate setters and getters. Uh, we're gonna say adjust, actually let's do that. Let's do update email, right? Update email, we're gonna take in an email here, which is gonna be a string, that's fine. And then we could say, for example, you, user.email is email, right? If you try this, it's gonna be a big problem, right? Because like I, it's the same like in, in the previous video. If I say user, 
uh, update email and I'm gonna say uh, foo at bar .com, right? And I'm gonna print uh, this email here, right? You see, it still keeps agg at foo.com. Even though we are updating this email here, right? That's the basic pointer shenanigans, the, beta, the, the, the classic pointer stuff. And that's because this user doesn't take, is no pointer. So if you have no pointer, we cannot update the state. We will update the state in the scope of this function here, right? In the scope of this function, the email address will be the one we specified. But once that function has returned, once the function is completed, once that stack that's being created for that function is completely eliminated, the user email address will be back to the email address it has in its memory, which is AGG. So to fix that, we need to make it a pointer, right? The problem is gonna be, right? Let's run this again real quick, right? Uh, well, actually it's fine. <laughs> let's, let's, let's keep it like that. So you can see that this updated, right? Because you could also make use it here, a pointer and all that stuff, but let's, let's keep it simple. So now you can see that it works, right? So now we are updating the user email to foo at bar.com. And if we print the email, we are going to see that it's actually foo at bar.com and not the previous one, because we have made this update email into a pointer, right? Which is actually the same as update email. We're going to take uh, a user, which is going to be a pointer to a user. Actually, uh, let, let's let's keep this U so it's 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 basically uh, consistent here. So you're gonna say update email. We're gonna give it a user, a pointer to a user, and we're also gonna need an email which is gonna be a string, and then we're gonna say U dot email is email, right? And you can see it's a little bit weird, but that's how in C everybody did this in C for years and years and decades, right? Um, and that's why basically, because it's a little bit redundant, you, you, you update an email, you pass it a user, you give it an email, um, and then you're gonna adjust it here, which is basically classic C. Uh, that's why Golang had some syntactic sugar, right? So you can eliminate this user here, and you're gonna specify the user um, here, right? Update email, of course, we're gonna have duplicated uh, stuff here. Actually, it's not, because I have a capitalized update user, it's fine. So we're gonna update this here, boom, right? That's the thing, let's run it again. Uh, go run main.go, boom, and uh, you can see foo at foobar dot, foo at bar dot com. So that's the first thing. So we're gonna use pointers if we need to update the state. Of course, there are some edge cases, for example, when do we also wanna use a pointer? Even though this email here, we don't wanna uh, use a pointer because we're not updating the state. But let's say, Let's say, let's go back to the basics, right? So first of all, a pointer is gonna be eight bytes, right? So that basically means that if you use a pointer here, right, here for example, uh, this user is gonna be eight bytes, are, go are going to be copied into that function, to that stack, eight bytes, right? Every time, each pointer will be eight bytes. But if we do not use a pointer here, right, if we delete this, this pointer is asterisk and we have no pointer, then there's going to be X amount of bytes, right? How many size of users, right? Something like that. So for now, our user is not too big, a string can actually have some arbitrary size, right? Let's say you have, I don't know, maybe a prompt template uh, for an open AI or something and you put that in and it's basically, I don't know, uh, maybe it's, it's, it's 500 bytes, who, who knows, right? Uh, maybe you're, you're reading a file, you put that file into memory, it's gonna be eight gigabytes. For example, it's actually too much, but let's say it's gonna be one gigabyte or something, that's, that's it's perfectly fine. Um, and for example, we have file here, uh, which can be uh, a slice of bytes, right? Just like that, boom. Who knows? How, how, how large is this, right? No, nobody knows, right? So, uh, but if we then are gonna call email, even though we are not going to access file, we're just gonna call email, this user is going to get copied into that function, right? The same thing here, right? But th this is maybe a little bit more clearer for people. So this user is going to get copied here. Even though we are asking for its email, <laughs> if it has a file, it's going to get copied into this function. So that could be that this is going to be eight, uh, one, one GB. 1GB uh, GB, can I type please? 1GB user uh, size, right? 
if the file is there, even though we just need an email. That's the second uh, reason why I'm using pointers is if I am calling a lot of function, if I'm calling a lot of uh, functions that takes in that pointer, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of a loop with, with the user and I know it's a big sized object, I will use a pointer so it will only copy eight bytes instead of the whole shebang. That's two, right? So basically two, when we want to optimize, um, optimize the memory, uh, when we want to optimize the memory for large objects that are getting called a lot, something like that, right? Of course, there are some other edge cases here and there, but we are not going to cover them, right? First things first. That's basically it, guys, right? So if you're in doubt, do we want to update? Use a pointer. Two, are we calling a lot of times the same object uh, and we know it's some reasonable size? Use a pointer. That's it. And for all the rest, I wouldn't recommend using a pointer because a pointer is prone to errors, right? Because a pointer, if you have a pointer setting, a user object setting across your application and you're going to update it somewhere, it's going to get updated everywhere and debugging that, good luck, right? And also the nil pointer dereference is a little bit annoying sometimes, uh, hard to debug and they are inconsistent, right? It could be on runtime and that's basically something we don't want. Um, so if we have no pointer, it's easier to be deterministic. But hey, um, these things come with experience too. Uh, if you feel confident, you can you can play around with that. But I'm overusing pointers. I, I will be completely honest with you guys. Uh, I'm not perfect. I tend to uh, overuse pointers because sometimes you're going to have a function, for example. I'm going to show you func, for example, um, get user, right? And that's going to return... A, um, Actually, I'm going to return a pointer to a user here and an error, right? And the reason why is because then I can return nil R, for example, right? In this case, it's going to be FMT error F uh, foo, right? You know what I mean? Because otherwise, uh, if you do not have a pointer, I need to return this, an empty user object, which in my opinion does not make a lot of sense because you're going to return a default initialized user if you know what I mean, right? So for example, you have uh, a user with a lot of fields. All these fields are going to get initialized to zero. They will not be empty. They will be the zero value of that type. A right? string is an empty string, an integer is zero and all that stuff, right? Bytes can be nil and all that, uh, uh, and all that thing, right? But that doesn't make any sense to me. For me, it makes more sense to have a nil here. So um, if I can use a pointer so I can return nil. So basically I know when I get user, of course I also need to check the error, right? But then I'm 100% sure my user will be nil, right? There will be no memory allocated for that thing instead of a default initialized uh, user, which will be, uh, which will cost memory, right? Especially for big objects. But that's something that I do. Is it idiomatic? Mm, questionable, questionable. I think a lot of people use the same technique, uh, but, but it's, I would not recommend doing it. I would just keep it a little bit uh, like that, a little bit more verbose, and call um, initialized with an empty with an empty object, right? Something like that. All right, guys, that's basically it. If you like this video, if you have more questions, feel free. Your thoughts about this uh, video, drop them in the comments. Let's discuss this. How you use pointers, and uh, maybe some people have better insights. Hey, perfectly fine. Uh, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, ring the notification bell, the whole shebang, to boost this algorithm. Jump in my Discord community and check my fulltimegorev.com course. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Bye-bye.